Greetings, viewers and listeners. This is Total Title with Asantua. I'm Marion, your host. Welcome to Did You Know This? Did you know that sometimes a detail from a person's life's plan can lead to pleasant surprises? Did you know that you can excel in any space you are placed, even when you ended there unintentionally? Our guest today is a pharmacist by training and recently got promoted to the rank of Associate Professor in Pharmacy at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. She's the first female lecturer in her department. She started her formal education at Morley Primary School at Co and continued to Akosomo International School and Wesley Girls High School for her O and A levels respectively. She holds a Bachelor of Pharmacy degree from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and a PhD from the University College London. In the year 2019, she won the Africa Oxford Initiative Travel Grant to facilitate and establish collaborations with researchers at the University of Oxford. The Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection in Ghana, as part of the International Women's Day celebrations in the year 2022, awarded her at the 7th Ghana Women Excellence Award in recognition of her contribution to the socio-economic development of Ghana in the category of tertiary education and scientific research. She's a wife, a mother to three sons, and committed to mentorship of younger people. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today is Professor Mrs. Cynthia Emini Dangwa. You're welcome, Prof. Digital Tato. Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me. All right. It's 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 an honor. All right. <laughs> The feeling is mutual. <laughs> so I've given a bit of background about you. If there's anything you want to add which I have not said, please do so. Thank you. Um, I would say that I'm a staunch Presbyterian. Okay. And um, I'm usher at the Christ Presby Church K N U S T. Okay. That means a lot to me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Being a Presbyterian is a whole institution on its own. Yes, it is. Uh, but uh, a bit of my background. I was actually born in Akosombo oh. because my parents were busy professionals. My dad was uh, an engineer at Water River Authority Akosombo, so I was born there. And my mother was a domestic bezer at Maoli Secondary School. Okay. So that's how come I started my basic education at Maoli Primary School. Oh, okay. Yes. Domestic bezer. You had a lot of goodies, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. And uh, we were always baking and all stuff. So uh, it was a nice childhood. And uh, I come from a family of four um, children. I'm the last born. Oh, so I'm well comforted <laughs> and very much supported by my siblings okay. and my parents. Yes. Do you have brothers? I have just one brother okay. and then um, two uh, sisters. Yeah. All right. I would like to. Okay. You In terms add. of uh, work, well, at KNUST, I teach pharmacology uh, in the College of Health Sciences because. All the students have to do pharmacology. So I teach medical students, pharmacy, nursing, midwifery, veterinary medicine, and ever. Almost the entire college. Yes, they all do pharmacology. At, what level? at different said, levels, okay. uh, from pharmacology, usually second, third, and fourth year, because it talks about the drugs or medicines and their effects on the body. So all right. they are all going to work with uh, one or the other, so they have to have knowledge on that. So it's not like a single course code where you could lump all of them together? No, and no, no. Uh, it's different topics in pharmacology and at different levels. So I shuttle everywhere in the college. Yes. That's quite a, a lot of work. Yes, plus postgraduate students. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I guess you enjoy it. That's I, you I do, do it. enjoy it. I do enjoy it. <laughs> Would you like to share a bit about how you became a pharmacist? Why did you do science even to okay. start with? Um, I think growing up uh, as a kid, I was uh, excited by anything science. And uh, I remember I used to enjoy reading my textbooks, science textbooks, because any time I understood the concepts or found out something, I was excited or it thrilled me. So, and 
that's how it started. But once you're always first in class and all that, and you're a good student, everybody will say, oh, you have to be a doctor. Coming from our side of the world. Yeah, <laughs> from our side of the world, you have to be a medical doctor. So that was in my head. I didn't know what I was going to do. But um, in 1995, 96, I think in this country, there was a, an university strike for about nine months. Mm -hmm. And also the last batch of the A level, as well as the uh, SHS first batch. first batch, were all coming to the university. So there was a double intake. I was part of the 96 year group, but um, I applied. And I think the load then was quite huge. So I didn't get medicine, I was offered pharmacy. Then I didn't know much about pharmacy. All I knew was getting my drugs from the dispensary at the hospital. But I discussed with my parents and they encouraged me to do it anyway. Uh, I could have waited for another year to reapply, but uh, I just decided, okay, I'll, I'll just go and, and read pharmacy. And uh, I haven't regretted. Um, I met my husband in pharmacy too, so, and I have enjoyed it. And I used to tell myself, well, even if I didn't get into medical school, I'm teaching pharmacology. Uh, to medical doctors is a cause they are afraid of <laughs> because there are so many drugs yeah. I mean to memorize and all, and, and all that uh, but I enjoy teaching it and I'm happy I've been able to go beyond the first degree yeah. and get a PhD yeah. well, you know, yes. you so, the exactly so and then uh, looking back I think it, it was the right thing God brought my way because I always say I don't like the hospital environment. When somebody is sick, I, I, I empathize too much, so I, I, I don't know how. In a crying yes, I, I don't know how I could have managed. So uh, God is never wrong. Yes, Let me just say that. I mean, so. I'm happy to be where I am today. Making yeah. a lot of impact. Yeah. So, because I've talked about your educational background, I'm just going to skip and move right. to your professional life. Being the first female in your department, how was the feeling from the beginning? How did you navigate? How is the feeling now? Um, I wasn't intimidated for being a female because at home we all did things together. And my brother can cook, I can do other money. So I wasn't intimidated because I was female, but I was always prepared to learn from my male colleagues and I was down to earth and uh, very friendly. So I think they all liked me and were always ready to help. Yes, so it's been like that. Yeah, so Prof, you were talking about the fact that your personality made it very easy for in the department which was predominantly male at the time you joined. Yes. Do you remember any situation coming up and then using your weight and then your sense of the responsibility? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think on a few occasions. Uh, yes. I made things easy by providing snacks for everybody. <laughs> The, meal, the meals are happy, that's all. Well, that's food. I mean, yes, I mean, yes, so. All right. Do you recall any challenges you faced in your department? Apart from the fact that the atmosphere was genuinely or generally friendly, Challenge, well, challenges not because you're a woman, but challenges because you can't get started. Yes, um, I, I think the, um, the initial challenges because I remember I had a very young family uh, at the time. I had my um, third son when I was doing my master's in the department and I was picked up um, to start my, my job immediately after. So he was just about a year old and uh, my husband works in Accra. The, the other kids were schooling in Accra. So I had to shuttle between Accra and Kumasi almost every weekend or two. And uh, the job itself was very demanding. So I think uh, it was quite challenging at the beginning. Uh, but as the years went by, I got used to it. So, Are you driving yourself? No, no, no. I always went by public transport. So, 
until Friday evening around 5 p.m. I will be setting off to Accra. Yeah, so yeah. it was a bit demanding, but I had to manage it all. Yeah. Do you recall any sacrifices you had to make? missing out on things you really wanted to be part of? <laughs> I think so. Um, I think uh, a bit of family time. I wish I had more time for my boys, but uh, it's also made them very independent. And uh, I'm sure I missed out on uh, social life a bit <laughs> then. But maybe, maybe if I had had too much time for that, maybe I wouldn't have reached where I am today too. So I, I have no regrets, yeah, but, uh, and... Uh, Do some win some, that's... Yes, that is it. <laughs> Church activities and others. I, I've always wanted to sing in the choir. Okay, you have but, a good voice. <laughs> <laughs> I used to when I was in uh, primary okay. school. We'll but, give it a try at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I couldn't fit in everything, so yes, you, you win some, you lose some, but no regrets. Yeah. yeah. Then we will talk about juggling for the sake of a younger person who might be listening to you, juggling family life with social life and professional life. How yeah. have you done it? Yes, a lot to juggle, but you must uh, spend time to plan. Plan well. I spend more time planning <laughs> than actually, and then it takes a little time doing the, the work. Um, I can wake up at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and, and I'm cooking or something. <laughs> I do both cooking and, and label everything, put in the, in the freezer for the week. Uh, I'll do my marketing on Saturdays. Uh, if I may have a function to attend, I'll probably do that on Friday. So. I'll stay up Friday evening and be cooking to, to store in there. But I think you must plan very well. It's important. And um, ask for help if you need it. It's I don't know why people don't want to. Superwoman, right? Yes, uh, we are not superwomen. <laughs> ask for help if you need it. I like to do things myself, but I, if I can't find time to, I always ask for help from family or from house help. They are a necessary evil. They will come and go. But if you want to progress, you can't do without as well. So, yes. So, with your boys, are they able to do household chores now? Because there's um, only no girl in the house. Yes. Uh, <laughs> now they are they are able to do um, most of the things for themselves. Um, they are between 18 and 14. So, um, they, are, they, are very, they are very independent now. So, yes. Okay, so then we go to, yeah, we talked about you juggling family life and social life and professional life. Back to AFOPS, because that is your claim to fame now. <laughs> Tell us about the story. How did okay. you come by it? How did you do the application, the selection, and everything? So I actually heard of AFOX or African Oxford Initiative from the African Academy of Sciences. Okay. That's because usually they'll put up calls when they come up. So I saw it and... Um, because you're a young affiliate. Yes, so I, 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 yes, I was, yes, okay. I was, um, I was still like an affiliate of the African Academy of Sciences. Yes, so when I saw the call, I was like, oh, for anything UK, I should be able to, but I hadn't been to Oxford. Uh, I did my PhD in Central London, and I went for a few conferences, um, Birmingham, Nottingham, and Glasgow, but I didn't meet us. So I wanted to take an opportunity, and I thought it would be a, a, a good challenge for me, so I, I tried it. And the first call was for a travel grant uh, to go and start collaboration. So I looked at what the group were doing in, in terms of drug discovery, which was quite similar to the things I was also doing and hope to do better. So um, I contacted the PI and uh, he was happy. And, and if I win, then I could come over. So yes, and I, when I went, I had to present on my research and where we can meet and collaborate. So that was good. And I went back again for about six weeks to work in their labs just get some initial data and it is based on that data that we applied again for the 
AFOG's Research Development Award, which was to help me set up my own lab group here. And so I think um, my initial hard work after getting the travel grant and ability to network and collaborate effectively are things that our young folks should um, take note of. Yeah. Viewers and listeners, this is how we end part one of our conversation with Professor Mrs. Cynthia Amininamba. Stay tuned for part two. Thank you for watching.